So good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to my webinar TV program. I'm starting to feel like I'm uh, a bit of a, a host. Um, I know that a few of you will be sat at home in your shorts, so I thought this would be probably an ideal uh, opportunity to introduce IPS to the Pipe Industries Guild. We are new members to the Pipe Industries Guild. Some of you will know us, some of you won't. I'm going to be talking to you today about our dual contained systems and IR welding. That's a, a little picture to start us off of our head office, which is up in Seam. And underneath, I've put my email address. So if any of you wish to contact me after this, please feel free. I think the next slide explains itself. Um, I am operating this on my own today <coughs> with the help of Kate from uh, the events team. So if you've got any questions, you can either put them on the chat and Kate will help me answer those on a format off this presentation or you can email me directly uh, hschofield at ipsflowsystems.com or you can phone me on my mobile on 07 818 452 821. Um, it's up to you which way you want to do it and I'd please feel free to contact me at any point or if there's anything that I cover in here that you'd like more information on please give me a call. So I'm going to start with IPS's product range. Um, we are pipes and fittings, so we look at our solvent cement systems for a start. You'll be looking at systems which are PVCU, PVCC, and ABS, heat fusion systems, polypropylene, polyethylene, ECTFE, and PFA. Strangely, as a plastics company, we also hold a press system, which is a steel system uh, in stainless steel, carbon steel, and copper. We do dual containment piping, uh, whether that's fl flexible or rigid. High purity. We also deal with fire retardant, electroconductive piping, all the tools, installation equipment, cement and welding machines. What I am going to concentrate on, as I said, is the welding machines. We're going to look at IR and we're going to look at dual containment that's flexible and rigid. So I'm going to bring you around <coughs> excuse me, to uh, welding technology. So welding technology has advanced over the years. Um, I'm going to start at the, at the bottom of this picture, if you like, and I'm going to start with the SG160, which is a fantastic little machine. It does socket fusion and butt fusion, butt fusion 32 millimeter to 160 millimeter, and socket fusion from 16 millimeter to 110. It is a manually operated machine. The VDOS is a sight machine, which again does butt fusion, and the different models, again, different pipe diameters, but you can get a machine that'll do 50 millimeter, and you can get a machine that'll do up to 315 millimeter. Again, this is a manually operated machine, which means that you, as the operator, are responsible for moving everything around on it. Now, as human beings all differ, we and human intervention on these what you find is that some people may count an extra second or a second less or they may have a different timer or they may use slightly different pressure than the person before so what happens sometimes you start to see that the, the bead on the weld can look a little different from weld to weld on a manual machine so what we're going to look at here is how to get rid of that we're going to look at the sp range of welding technology this is IR welding. The machine in front of you is an Agru SP110. Um, it does 20 millimeter to 110 millimeter. Um, I, could <laughs> I could sit here and explain to you the ins and outs and the workings of it, how it's built, how IR works. I think that's going to take me longer than the half an hour that I've got. So what I thought I'd do would be just put a small video clip up here. Now, this video clip does have some music. I've turned the music down and I am gonna talk over it and hopefully you'll get an idea of how, how this machine works and, and why it's so good. So the gentleman that's operating, this is operating in a clean room environment. Um, that is the machine being unpacked. And as I've said, this is fully automatic, saying that you do have to push a couple of buttons. So, the first one you're going to have to push is to switch it on. Once the machine is up and running, it's going to ask you what language do you want it in. 
So he's selected English and he's going to put his registration card. That ties him to the machine and the machine to him. He's let the machine know he's done that. He's now going to select what he's welding, which is PVDF. And in this case, it's 75 millimeter diameter. So he's now going to open the clamps up and he's going to have to put into here the reducing shells or the clamps or these are magnetic. Um, old machines used to be a little grub screw. Everything on this is about clean, speed, efficient. It's a lot click quicker to click these in with a magnetic clip. So he's going to let the machine know that that's all done. And now it's going to ask him to bring the plane out, which has a depth gauge on it, which will now bring the clamps to the correct distance so the man can operate the machine and weld pipe. He's introduced a piece of pipe into the clamps and he's now going to introduce his fabrication to the other side. He's going to use the rear clamp as a backstop to stop the pipe moving. And once he's happy with the tension on his clamps, which he'll adjust now, He'll let the machine know that he is ready to perform a weld. So what happens now is it will bring the plane into, into play. This is a precise tool that is calibrated to only take off what it needs to take off. What we suggest is three times that you be able to wrap that swarf around the pipe work. And I think you can see from the length of the piece he's got there, that's gonna go around about three times. So he's gonna let the machine know he's happy about that. And it's asked him to push the button, the plane goes away and it brings the pipe and the fabrication together. And this is where we're going to look for alignment. The beauty of this machine, the bed moves up and down and backwards and forwards so you can get perfect alignment with your fittings and your pipe. He's happy with that. So it brings the heater plate into play. Now this is where everything gets a bit different. The pipe and the fabrication do not touch the heater plate. There is no cross-contamination of this heater plate. Once the heater plate is out of the way, it puts the, the fabrication and pipe work together under the set pressure for the set amount of time. Once the machine has told him, the gentleman can undo the clamps and then visually inspect the weld for quality. He's also going to measure the width of the bead. Now to any of you that have done a book well before, you'll know the size of a bead. And this one I think is 3.3, .3. is it 3.3 millimeters? So the world's perfect, the data logger turns out a sticker. That sticker is from when he registered at the beginning, that ties him to the machine, the machine to him, and that welded joint to that machine and him. So with the data logger, you get full traceability. So if I'm to look at the IR welded welding system benefits, first one, repetitive weld consistency. The weld is the same time after time after time after time because the machine's doing it, not a human. Less chance of contamination. Nothing touches the heater plate, so there is no cross-contamination from anything. Nothing should have ever touched that heater plate. Full traceability. These machines come with data loggers. They produce stickers that tie the fabrication and the welder and the machine together with the date on it. Very, very small weld bead. This means you keep your flow rates up. So if we're to look at the, the range of the SP machines at the bottom, we have an SP63, SP110, SP250, and an SP315. Again, the number corresponds to the diameter of the pipe that this machine can weld. Just to give you a bit of an over, overview of how consistent it is and repetitive it is, there's a, a dosing pipe work job that we were involved with. It's PVDF. Um, I think you'll all agree with me, it's extremely neat and tidy and equal. There's nothing looked odd there. There's over 5,000 IR welds in that one job. How do I tie? Everything up. So we're going to, what we've done is we've had a look at the welding machine, which is the IR technology, which can weld polyethylene, or polyethylene, or it can uh, weld Purad, or the, the high purity systems, like the guy was just welding the PVDF. 
What I'd like to do is concentrate a little bit on the industrial stuff here, the dual contained. So what I'd like to do now is introduce to you a dual contained system called Polyflow. It's quite unique in that the system is extruded as piping pipe already. You can see the annulus uh, around the top here on the pipe. Um, the benefits of this is it tends to act a little bit more like a single pipe in the first place. Underneath there you can see a couple of pictures for examples. Um, this was a job we were involved with where the IR welding was involved and polyfly was involved. I think that any of you that are pipe fitters out there would probably agree with me that's an extremely neat looking job. All the drain off valves are in there, blank off. It just, it just looks neat and tidy and it is neat and tidy. So how does dual containment and the IR welding machine join together? Well, the polyflow system is what we call a sim simultaneous welding process, which means it welds the inner pipe and the outer pipe at the same time. Actually no different than the video you just watched. So basically the man will put the fabrication, the fitting or the pipe into the machine, select what is, um, uh, whether it's polypropylene or whether it's PVD, and then he'll set the machine to weld it and it will weld the inside and the outside simultaneously. Now, at the bottom there, there's a little picture of a cutaway so you can see the annulus in the pipe. And there's a, a drawing of a, a, a fitting there, which again, comes complete with the annulus already in it. Um, the benefits of this is it, number one, it's clean, number two, it's tidy, and number three, speed. The less time you spend welding, the quicker the job goes in, the less time you're spending on site. So we'll have a look at the size of the materials for the polyflow. Uh, Polyflow's largest diameter internal pipe is 110. That will give you an external pipe size of 160 millimeter. And the smallest is 32 millimeter, which will give you a pipe size on the outside of 50 millimeter. All of this comes in five meter lengths and it is uh, available in PE100RC, which is crack resistant polyethylene, or it comes in uh, beige gray polypropylene. The beauty of this system is not that just that you can IR weld it, it comes with a complete and full set of fittings, whether that's from a simple 90 degree elbow, a 45, uh, a dog bone collar, or what I quite like about it are the stub flanges. They have a termination flange, which does exactly what it says. It lets the inner pipe run through, but terminates the outer. If you have a situation where maybe you need to actually flange two pieces of pipe together, they have a, a run through flange. So basically it lets the outer and the inner both run through and is sealed with O-rings in between them. This is a really easy system to use. It's a really easy system to put together and has every single fitting that you're ever gonna need. So just to look at the benefits, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start at the bottom of this one. Again, strange, but outer and inner OD of the fittings and the pipe correspond exactly. That's why it works very, very well on an IR machine. High safety. So basically the heater plate is out of the way. There's no danger of any of the operatives burning themselves. You're probably gonna be dealing with nasty chemicals. This is dual contained. It's good for the environment and it's good for the people that are operating or working on that plant. Look at the cost savings of this pipe work compared to your traditional trying to put it together pipe in pipe system. And again, more uniform construction. It looks neat and tidy when it's gone in. It's co-extruded, so it acts like a single wall pipe. It has fewer concerns during expansion and contraction because obviously the internal pipe and the external pipe expand and contract at the same rate. Full pressure rating, it'll do up to 16 bar. And again, it is very similar to a single wall product. It's safe and it's fast to install. So again, just a quick overview. Operating pressure up to 16 bar. Polyethylene can be used below ground. Operating temperatures on your polyethylene are up to 60 degrees C and on your polypropylene up to 90 degrees C. Bear in mind, like I've said, this is a fusion welded system. So you are gonna need an IR machine. It is a fantastic system. And if any of you have got any questions on this or the IR welding that I've been talking to you about so far, again, please get in touch or let 
the girls at the events know that you've got more questions. We do have other dual contained systems. Now, I'm sorry about the picture on the left hand side of my screen. It's quite difficult to show um, a, a white product on a white background. Maybe I should have put a blue square there, but that product is agro safe. Again, this is a simultaneous welded system in polypropylene and polyethylene. But here's where you get your differences. It is also available in PVDF and it's also available in ECTFE. The carrier pipe, the internal pipe, goes from 32 millimeter up to 250 millimeter with a full range of fittings. So your main differences there are that you've got PVDF, ECTFE and your pipe sizes have increased. But again, it is still a simultaneous welded system. Underneath a more traditional um, solvent cement P UPVC system, um, it goes from half inch internal pipe work to three inch internal pipe work. This system has every conceivable fitting or adaption to it that you can consider, whether that be zone checkers or leak detection tees. Um, I think probably most people have seen a system like that at some point in their life. Brings us on to our flexible dual containment. Now, with this product, it is a point A to point B chemical delivery system. There is no need to use catch pots unless you want to. Now, the lining on our hose is either PVC or polyethylene. So again, it will handle virtually any chemical you want to throw at it. It comes in lengths of up to a thousand meters and it fits on a cable tray. So this reduces the amount of time that you're on site. It's a two man operation, but where our system is more innovative, I'd say, is that we actually have proper engineered termination fittings for our hoses. Gone are the days now of Heath Robinson type affairs with a Jubilee clip and a hose tail. The industry is now demanding a better system. So what we have here are engineered PVC fittings, they all come with um, steel clips, which are the correct tolerance for the correct size pipe work. So the top one there is a dosing connector that would fit onto the inner, inner hose. Again, connected with its steel band and it is finished off with a female BSP. The outer termination is exactly what it says. It terminates the outer of the pipe again. Now the fitting at the bottom is a really clever little fitting. So, this terminates the outside or the outer hose on here and it terminates the inner hose inside that union connection again with a steel band clip. At that end of the fitting you're left with the BSP so if you want to come off that fitting onto a flange or you want to come off onto a valve it's there for you to do so. Like I say, gone are Jubilee clips and gone are hose tails. These are proper engineered termination fittings for a flexible system. Like I say, point A to point B, there is no need for catch pots. However, some people want a catch pot. So here's a picture of a job that was done um, in Yorkshire, I think. Um, this is our flexible dual contained. The customer did want a catch pot on this. So what I'll show you here is there is your outside termination. There's your steel banded clip and the outside pipe actually terminates there and the inside pipe runs right through and then it goes back into the outside pipe and that will probably lead back off to his, um, I don't know, his bulk storage tank or whatever. There will be times you need to come off a flexible and you need to go on to maybe a rigid system. So what we supply in this situation would be a, a connection containment box. At the moment, you can see in there, we've got this, the flexible uh, that's uh, connected inside with a PVC union. Like I say, you might need to go on to some existing pipe work that's already there that just has a single, a single skin flange. So what we would suggest is a containment connection like this. You can put the, you can put the flange inside the box and then it remains dual contained. All of these things are available from IPS and again, like I said to you earlier, if any of you got any questions on any of this, please fire me an email or give me a ring. It would be very unfair of me to sit here and speak to the Pipe Industries Guild without touching on polyethylene. Um, 
In fact, I'm sure some of you have probably seen the picture of the man holding up that pipe work before. Uh, just to give you an idea of our polyethylene range, uh, sizes go from 20 millimeter up to 3,500 millimeter, and you can have that 3,500 millimeter in lengths of up to 610 meters. We do molded fittings, they go up to 630 millimeter, but there is a full fabricated range of fittings up to 3,500 millimeter. That is a full range, that's flanges, 45s, 90s, blanks. It has a full range of fittings. I would imagine that the people I've spoken to before that have seen this picture before and knows what this is used for. <clears throat> the applications are there underneath here. This is also used in applications in um, effluent plants and process plants. Now these pipes here were welded and you can see the pipes up in the left hand side there ready to weld. But like I say, it can be delivered in lengths of up to 610 meters and that is towed uh, behind a boat, which I think a lot of you already know. I'm coming towards the end of my presentation now. Um, and I'd just like to give you a little overview of who we are. Like I told you at the beginning, we're based up in Seagham in County Durham. There's 49 of us. Um, at the bottom there, you can see the directors of the business. The managing director is Mr. Andrew Lamb. I don't know whether his photo has been photoshopped on there or not. I can't tell properly. Uh, Stephen Hunter, who is our sales director, and David Stidolf, who is our operations director. Down the right-hand side of that page, you've got the rogues gallery. Gary, Paul, Peter, Andy, good-looking lad there, myself, Mark, James, and Dave Wally, who is our national product manager for Kessel Drainage, which is uh, hybrid drainage stations. So I'm going to come on to my last slide now. I'm not going to read this slide out to you. I just want you to know why people use this. Um, I used to be a pipe fitter and I used to buy all my pipe for my PS. And the reason that I used to do that is because I have many memories of being sat in the cold and in the rain at 4.30 on a winter's night and I needed pipe on the floor the next morning so that my team could carry on work. The thing that I like here, 95% of all orders are complete and shipped first time. I know that when I order it, I'm gonna get my pipe on the floor the next day. I'm not gonna get a delivery note that says half of it is missing. As I said right at the beginning, my details are available. If anybody wants to get in touch with me, have a chat, have a talk about IR welding or any of our dual contained systems. I would like to thank you all for your attention. Thank you for joining me here today. Um, it hasn't felt like supermarket sweep, but it is very strange actually talking to a blank screen. So thank you very much for your attention. I believe Kate's now going to take over. Thank you very much. <laughs>